Welcome to the Libertarian Counterpoint. I'm Richard Fields. On the program today, we have Gia Christopher and John Cameron. Gia is the chair of the, the first female <laughs> chair of the <laughs> Libertarian you. Party of Placer County, as well as uh, John Cameron, the author of the uh, previously published Rewire and Retail, and now the third book in the trilogy, just like J.R. Tolkien, is Aristocracy. Spelled S-E-A. Because uh, yeah, I couldn't come with up with water. another re-title. One of my friends, so-called friends, might be an ex-friend, said, well, what about retard? So no, like you that. can't say that anymore. Well, Especially of, in a book title. Speaking of retard, maybe I should. Uh, no, this was a, retard uh, and feather is all you this got. This is a, a, bad, a, ba a bad transfer. But uh, President Trump was nominated by two uh, Norwegian legislators for the uh, Nobel Peace Prize as a result of the uh, negotiations that he did with uh, Kim Jong un of North Korea. Now, the interesting thing is that the two libertarian legislators who made that nomination are from a party in Norway that is libertarian leaning. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that uh, libertarians should now uh, applaud what uh, Trump did in, uh, in Korea? Well, actually, maybe. Uh, and well, I want to talk about spin here. If a, if a liberal slash labor slash socialist president like uh, well, what they gave Obama? Didn't they give Obama? Yes, they he did. Got, he for got the Nobel Peace Prize for after, being black. After well, being like in office he was for in like office 30 for, days. for three weeks. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. if if and did nothing. If uh, Carter or or Clinton, I don't or know if they got it, but any uh, of those but, yeah. people would have would have gotten a negotiator to the table with Kim Il Jung. They would have gotten. There wouldn't even have been a vote. They would have voted by phone and, and FedExed the Nobel Peace Prize to them because that is, seriously, the, the North Korea is a lunatic state. Um, it's a slave state. It's a, it's, a, it's a hole in the soul of the planet. And, and, and it, it goes to crazy lengths. I mean, they're, 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 they're uh, autocratic rulers do insane things and they do terrible things to their own people and you know if the country loosens up a little bit um, Korea South Korea is is an economic wonderland compared to much of the world and and you know you, you can't really make generalizations about populations say they're hard-working people but I, I can't imagine that if that that wall comes down which it will if there's any kind of movement across that border um, and if the, the nuclear threat that is actually real, maybe not to us, because I can't imagine them hitting us with anything, much less a missile at that range, because it is North Korea after all, but they can certainly mess with countries nearby. I think, I think it's a wonderful thing. I mean, should you have to have that kind of international diplomacy? Do I like it in my libertarian America? Would you even have, uh, um, you wouldn't have diplomats anywhere. Who cares, right? You have trade. Trade, have trade as tra you, you have win trade. friends through trade. You win friends we through trade. We have Hollywood. They love our movies. We have basketball. They love our basketball. And I'm sure that they produce something that we like. Yeah. We well, it'll be really, trade. really, really interesting to see where this goes, whether or not uh, it will go beyond uh, the nomination by a couple of uh, libertarian Well, I think what's good for the goose is good for the gander. And if Obama got one, Trump should get one too. Because well, yeah, Trump I'm, not sure if I, I'm not sure if uh, I would wish that on anybody. I mean, as, after all, Yasser Arafat got the Nobel Peace Prize. Right. Well, so I'm not sure we should wish the Nobel Peace Prize on anything that Henry Kissinger won. <laughs> uh, I, no, is, I, I absolutely agree. But the, you know, the idea that you call it a peace prize is not a peace prize. What it is is it's it, the way it's presented is an award for the the uh, the socialist that's managed to capture the news media for five minutes, or the most but popular person of the day. Yeah, yeah. Right. and so, but you know, given but it makes, it makes, it, it makes, it, it makes it re it, what's really interesting is it's got the media uh, doing connection fits trying to figure out figure out how to cover it. Yeah. That that's that's amusing. George Will wrote a column. Right. George Will was the uh, the uh, eminent dean of American uh, newspaper columnists mm -hmm. wrote a, a column suggesting very strongly that Bill Weld, who was the uh, vice presidential nominee of the Libertarian Party in 2016, uh, and who is actively campaigning to be the 2020, he hasn't made an announcement yet, but he's acti he's going to all of the, he's going to all of the, uh, the state conventions. Yes, he, he was, was there in, where he we were. He was in California. Yes, he was. He's he going to be there. at the uh, New Orleans convention uh, later on this month. 
Uh, he uh, is making all of the right moves, all of the right noises to become the uh, 2020 Are Libertarian no uh, nominee. Yeah. And George Will thinks that's a fine thing. He thinks that he would be uh, an honest conservative. Now, you have to understand that from Will's perspective, and the way that Will writes, a, cons a conservative is actually one of the old, honest conservatives who are mm -hmm. mostly libertarian, not a social conservative, but okay, a, a Goldwater Republican. A, 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 well, no, a, a, an Eisenhower Republican. Oh. An Eisenhower well, Republican. Damn, you guys are old. Uh, no, just kidding, sorry. <laughs> no, no, he is. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, does does the Will? Uh, you know, kind words. Will it make a difference when you have Absolutely a lot of people? Absolutely not. Bill Weld does not have the it factor. There is no way we can get behind Bill Weld. First of all, he nominated or he endorsed Hillary Clinton while he, he, he was vouched a, for her. He, he vouched for her while he was a vice president running for vice president. He vouched that yeah, Hillary Clinton would be a great president. He that vouched is, for her character. Let's he, not let's not change whoa, 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 whoa. let's not change the. He, he vouched, vouched for her character. Yeah, he says he's a and good she kid, is the for person character. who I can guarantee Which you. I don't her agree with. Her character, but is it's different than vouching for her. Uh, as a president, that he her, didn't her do. Her character repugnant. is Joseph Stalin slash Adolf her Hitler slash Her character is Mao repugnant, Zedong. and her character changes with who she's sitting with on whichever well, yeah, particular no, 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 day. No, no, no. So if she sat with this group, she'd be better? Oh, she would be like, oh, you know what, I love the uh, libertarians. You know, I, would, I used to be a libertarian. I, I ate one last she was a gold, week, she fricasseed. Was a, she was gold water girl. Gold water girl. She was so. a gold water girl. Yeah, she was. She is a snake in the grass, and uh, you know snakes are actually quite useful. Yeah. Yeah. Have eating. you ever had a f rattlesnake? Tastes no. like tastes like chicken. Well, well for eating bugs. But okay, Bill so Weld is we'll we'll, yes. we'll move on. <laughs> and uh, but why don't we just skip the line and just go ahead and put uh, Larry Sharp? Wow. <laughs> I'm not sure that he's running, but who knows? I know, but why don't you know what he's got the it factor? What do you think about that? Well, I I uh, am uh, totally nonpartisan when it comes oh. to the. Uh, nominee for the Libertarian Party uh, candidate. Mm. Whoever it is, you can believe that I will support the Libertarian mm. nominee. Well, that's because you're the press, press secretary for the Yeah, Libertarian and Party. I would get fired did if you, I did not. Did uh, you announce that on the show? By any oh, yeah, well, I may oh, have. That's right. No, I, I mean, have. on this show. I may have, I may have. No, like before, uh, well, I may have. I oh, may I'm have. just checking. Bill just Weld doesn't have it. Okay. It's just me. Uh, anyway, he might be electable. Well, uh, what's interesting to me, what's yeah. interesting to me is that he has the support of a certain percentage of the libertarian uh, mm -hmm. delegates, uh, the uh, adamant uh, non-support of another group of libertarian activists, yeah. and he has name recognition among the media and among the, the establishment. For being a goofball associated with <laughs> Gary Johnson who sticks his tongue out in the middle of a... I think it was Gary Johnson that had the, uh, the goofball uh, well, right. reputation. Right. But anyway. Question, question. Yeah. Uh, if, if he's a good candidate, one of the reasons that people liked him as a candidate in the last election was that he was supposed to have this huge fundraising power because of all mm -hmm. his connections and his family money and all the rest of that. And I think he raised like zero. Well, I'm not sure what he raised, uh, but I'm, su I'm sure that it was probably less than we, we as libertarians We as libertarian hoped. Yeah. So uh, be, did he not spend any of the money because he, he thought it was a lost cause? Did he not spend any of the money because he's not going to spend the money? I mean, if, you know, I really don't, care who the candidate is if they move the the country you know 20 percent well I'd like 100 percent 20 percent further toward freedom i don't care where they come from i'd well, like I to see it all the way to freedom what i think is fascinating is this is George Will here's what i think is fascinating i think it's absolutely fascinating that the most preeminent conservative columnist in the country thinks that the libertarian nomination is important enough for somebody to get. Yeah, he doesn't want that, somebody to win, though. That, to me, says a lot. And if you would have read the column, right. you would realize that he's talking about it as an antidote to Trumpism and, and as an antidote to, to the Democrat uh, offerings. Mm. I like and the, that's good. I like, I like the sentiment, but Bill Weld, and we, I don't know how you, how you feel about that, but he does not have the it factor. We shall see. Mm. Mm. Moving on, police unions are blocking uh, a California Senate bill, or I'm uh, sorry, Assembly Bill, AB 931. The uh, AB 931 would change the standard for police use of deadly force from reasonable to necessary. Right. In other words, mm -hmm. it would have prevented the killing of the, of the, the, the young Clark kid because <sighs> they had a reasonable expectation that he was carrying a gun, which turned mm -hmm. out to be a cell phone. Uh, necessary would make it's a tougher standard. It would make it more difficult for police to justify shooting at the perp. 
uh, and the police unions, understandably, are very much against it. What about what about you? Yeah. Well, um, does the language change anything if they say it's necessary and then they do an internal investigation on their own and they find uh, no wrongdoing? What's the difference in the language? So you're saying if the actions don't change, the so you, language so just puts a bandaid. So you're saying it's much ado about nothing. It's, it's not much ado about thing. nothing. I don't think that this should matter at all because I really think that what, if they change the wordage, the verbiage about what they're doing, and they don't change what they're doing then all of this is just um, rhetorical. Hmm. May I chime in? Yes. So I, um, I think you could, you could, um, now the, the police unions will tell you that you can't clearly define it enough to, to put hard rules in, but they har have hard rules about everything, like you know how you put someone into a car, mm -hmm. or how you put handcuffs mm -hmm. on someone. So. If we could do we could do a simulation if we had like a shooter game here, how in the world? Let me back up. So, you're a policeman. There are eight other policemen standing there. You all have bright lights shined on the perp. You have your weapon out drawn, loaded around in the chamber, and you have it aimed at him. Mm -hmm. You can see everything he does. Mm -hmm. Volume over here because it makes people paranoid. You can see everything he does, right? Mm -hmm. And you wait, 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 and when you see a gun in his hand. Mm -hmm. Or a cell phone. No, when you see a gun in his hand, identify it as a gun, bang. Right? What they do now is, uh, it might be, right? So here's the thing. Police officer is the 12th most dangerous job in this country, Correct. not the first most dangerous Thank thing you. in this country. Thank you, that is country. such a good point and to note. And it should be the most dangerous job in the country because just like a soldier defending this country, you're defending this country from the inside and, and, and uh, you're, you should go into it knowing that your life might be at risk and you're wearing a flak vest and you have your gun drawn and you've been trained to do this stuff somebody might take a bullet, but unless the right. perp pulls out a cannon quicker than you can pull That's the right. trigger and somehow manages to fire, like all of a sudden howitzer, right? Mm -hmm. And you've got a gun, it's insane. What, what people do, unfortunately, is they don't clearly define the situation and put some hard and fast and rule, rules in place about how to do it, and the 1% of the time these rules aren't gonna apply, who cares, right? It's their job to take a bullet one out of a million times rather than gunning down innocent people. What is gunning the most dangerous down job innocent, in the United States? Uh, logger. Yes. Now, why don't we have a United States flag instead of a blue line? It's a brown flag, a blue line, and a brown line, and brown lives matter <laughs> for the loggers that <laughs> die every day. I think farmers are up there, too. I'm not right. Sure. right. Uh, so logging, but, farming, right. mining, uh, manufacturing right. in the glassware industry. Uh -huh. Uh, truck drivers, yep. all of those people are ahead way of cops. Up, like, it's not even like, uh, it's and like And most way cops ahead. are killed in traffic accidents. Yes. Because they drive too fast, probably. Well, because the high-speed pursuit, which they're not supposed to do anymore, mm -hmm. and because they're, they spend so many hours in their car, it would be like an Uber driver, right? Driving Only they're too, driving too, too at tired. 100 miles an hour, talking on their cell phone. Because they can actually talk on their cell phone. It's not illegal for cops it's to called, know. Yeah, it's called, it's called a police radio. Yeah, it's your cell phone. Yeah. We'll talk on. Anyway, I didn't mean to grab all no. of that from you, but it's in, it's insane to sign up to be a cop. Yes. And then uh, demand that there is no risk to your life. Well, it's like this. It's like, hey, um, you want to be a lawyer? You've got to go to uh, college for eight to ten years. You want to be a doctor? Eight to ten years. You want to be, uh, you know, something like, you know, in the system where police you can academy. Eight to ten weeks. Eight to ten weeks. Hey, do you want to <laughs> be a police officer? Do you have a high school diploma in eight weeks? You can have as much power over our community as you feel like you deserve. And that is a problem. A person who has a high school diploma and eight weeks of training, and then they go around and do like, I don't know, a weekend class on the, you know, and, and then they become an expert in narcotics, and then they're busting people who are foraging for mushrooms, for edible, delicious morals, for your steaks and your... Are you saying that, uh, are, you in, are you intimating that, uh, the profession of law enforcement would uh, tend to draw sociopathic or psychopathic personalities. Well, isn't it yeah. weird? Because I think you're going a, in that direction. I, yeah, I think there's probably more well, 
psychopaths. I think that's in, a very good segue, my friend. In Washington, D.C., than anywhere that. else that's uh, a in the very country. In fact, segue. that is statistically proven. More psychopaths in D.C. than any other city. I well, wonder why the that is. Well, they're the ones that write the laws for the minion police officers who carry out these unjust <laughs> laws. <laughs> now, I, I would think that there's actually even more psychopaths per capita in D.C. than people think because. I don't think people, members of Congress and their staff actually submit to tests. So if you threw them in, the, it, would, it would raise that rate even more. Well, the interesting thing, I mean, I, I have long said that the, that, that the political class is largely made up of sociopaths. Mm -hmm. For sure. Uh, and that's, of course, a step below psychopath. Yes. Uh, but certainly, when I, when, I, when I came across this article that says, you know, it, first of all, there are more psychopaths in cities than there are in rural areas. Mm -hmm. There are more psychopaths in highly populated per states. Capita. Per, per capita, capita. right. Yeah. Uh, high, high, uh, highly populated states like New York and California. Mm -hmm. Than there are in uh, lower populated states like uh, you know Wyoming or uh, Minnesota, mm -hmm. uh, and and the reason is you know if you think about it the reason is is intuitive, if you live in a small town, everybody knows you and everybody knows your reputation yes. and you can't get by with shit, mm -hmm. whereas mm -hmm. if you are one person among millions in say New York City, you can just set a you know get a new set of friends every two weeks and nobody will know Washington, the difference. Washington D.C. is Hollywood for ugly people. <laughs> <laughs> I love that line. Thank you. That's a beautiful. Thank and you. and of course, okay. if you are a psychopathic person, That's you are right. probably addicted to power or Correct. have a, a huge desire for power. Oh, you think? And where to go for power? but to the seat of power. That's correct. The so city. where where are the six or seven um, zip codes or counties areas with the highest per capita income in this country? Ones that surround Washington. The Beltway. Oh, yeah. right, the yeah, Beltway. absolutely. So they're they're sucking the marrow out of the country. And yeah. speaking of sucking the marrow out of the country, we have people oh. who are sucking the marrow out of uh, the taxpayers of California. Wow, and I'm what do you referring, do about of this? course, to people in Read California, that 23, That's 000, 20, almost 23,000 people who are receiving pensions from the state of California in excess of $100,000 per year. are collecting well, what, a pension with full benefits too, right? Yes. With full so, benefits too. So it's actually worse than that? And, yes. and the, whole, the whole pyramid is rotten because the, the average uh, government income in this country, if you put wages and benefits in, is $122,000 a year if you work for the government, if you average it, if you put in wages and the, the benefits and pensions and all the rest of that. That's what, it's, what you get. In the private sector, it's sixty-two dollars or $63,000. If you look at what it takes to generate by savings in an IRA, uh, by, by uh, um, being in your 401k or whatever you happen to have at work to generate $100,000 a year, that's a chunk of change for a long time. These folks did not do that. What they did was simply work in their jobs. These are, uh, if you look down the list, if you go, this is all public record. You can go onto the state of California website and look at what people make and look at what they make in retirement. Um, this disgusts me because if if your 401k investment goes south and the market tanks, then then the money amount of money that you are paid is adjusted by the market. If you're getting a pension, that is a defined benefit. It's given to you no matter what happens to the investment. So if state of California um, folks uh, don't manage that money well or the economy tanks and they lose 20% on their portfolio, too bad. Those people still get $100,000. And unfunded pension liabilities in this country. And some of them are getting upwards of 350000 They are. Yeah. But what's, what's scary is how many, uh, this is not a CalSTRS, this is just CalPERS. So CalSTRS, I think the average teacher in retirement after 30 years in the state of California, which means that they can retire, I think, at 62 because they started as a teacher in like at 27 and they worked 32 years, if that math is right. Um, you can use my pen, go ahead. It's um, such a cool pen. Is $70,000 a year. What that means is that a, married, a teacher married to another teacher earns $140,000 a year in retirement pension. Mm. And then add into the fact that they don't pay Social Security, so basically they're getting paid 8.5% more than anybody else. 
And they probably got a job. Probably got a job. You know, qualifying for them, themselves for social security. Right, for the and they worked three weeks for the school system somewhere and managed to finagle. I it's, made a drawing is, yeah. of how I would explain how this works. Yeah. Okay, so here's the economy. It's a truck. It's yeah. broken down, and you got to push it forward. Yeah. And a state employer, a state employee, gets on the truck and pushes it and lets everybody push it behind him. He's standing on it. I like that. I like that. That's a, that's a good graphic. You can't see it right over there. Right over there. You can't see it. So it's, it's a it's, truck, take my word and there's for like it. six guys pushing the truck graphic. forward, and the state employee who has a pension, he hops on the truck and starts pushing. Yeah. I like that. That's yeah. my... I'll put that back. That's of, course, my uh, of course, your 401k is dependent upon... Uh, making astute investments in companies like, well, maybe uh, GE. There's a good blue chip stock. Oh, goodness What sakes. happened to GE in well, the last I, I, couple I, of days? Yeah, Booted I, off the Dow. What's up uh, with that? I, I, did, I, I, did not, I did not know this. I did not know this. I did not How know that, that, uh, that um, apparently... Uh, uh, Jack Welch. Jack Welch, uh, who has, they, there have been more books written about Jack Welch and GE as being the, the uh, super manager. Super manager as being the, the model for corporate America. There's probably, what, 500 books? No, oh, I don't know. But, yeah, but he, 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 uh, yeah. he had a, uh, a reputation that probably exceeded him a little bit. What Jack Welch was uh, a master at doing was taking, uh, investing in a whole lot of different companies, many of them financial companies. Mm. And he would adjust the, f the earnings of the financial companies such that the, sh the earnings of GE as a corporation would always beat estimates by about a penny per share. And he did that for decades. Once he retired and wrote his autobiography and uh, so forth, all of that started falling apart and the uh, market cap has uh, fallen for GE, so now it's like a $12 stock. In fact, so small of a market capitalization, it no longer qualifies to be a member of the Dow Jones Industrial That's Leverages. Sad. After 110 mm -hmm. years, that it's being, it's being replaced by Aww. Walgreens. Walgreens? Walgreens is still open? Walgreens has replaced uh, GE. Not the dollar store? So, you know, let's ring the funeral bells for the successor of Jack Welch and the, and, you know, and the, and, the, and the poor folks who still work there as long as it continues to exist. You know what, they make good uh, washers and dryers, in my opinion, <laughs> but I haven't bought one, so. The, the latest bad. worry from the people who worry about things like this is that bots yes. are a threat to the 2018 American elections. Gia, are you worried? And why not? Because you know what, if we don't have a system, to prove you're not a robot, first of all, here's the thing. Why are you as a human being having to prove to a robot that you're not a robot, right? Going online, that's kind of funny. When right? you go online and it says click yeah, there if captcha. you're not a robot. Yeah, captcha. Yeah. That's, I never thought of it that way. You're having to prove to a robot that you're not a robot, okay? So but these robots that are going to be collecting these ballots, they're not to the level of uh, security that we need them to be at, at this point. Because, um, well, I don't know about you, but I heard uh, Russia hacked the election? I don't think so, but if that's true, then why are we even contemplating? Well, no, I, I think what they're talking about when uh, bots threatening the election, they're talking about things like memes, they're thinking oh, about taking uh, Because I uh, was hearing about more people uh, social, voting so online is what was no, going to start happening. No, I think they're happening. talking about social media being manipulated by... Oh, that's absolutely happening. By... Uh, Propaganda. Propaganda well, by, machines. Yeah, by propaganda, by yeah. people who are very clever with software and social media right. accounts and so forth. What they are doing is they are taking themes that generate with, with people mm -hmm. and accentuate, accentuating them on the, mm -hmm. uh, on, the, on the web. You know, you get things like the, uh, I forget, well, Pizzagate. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as I know, there was no truth to, uh, you know, to, Not to that. that. We know of. But, but, it went, but it went, but it went, oh, it went viral. Yeah. Russia Gate, you know, as far as we know, nothing to it. But it's, you know, now we have a special prosecutor. Well, if you if mm -hmm. you if you bang the drum loud enough, yeah. and and you know, I think one of the problems here, and and it probably means that I'll, after the show, if the robot that watches the show and picks out keywords yeah. finds That's right. me. Um, Google owns 93% of the search business out there, and during the last or before the last election, uh, I put search terms in uh, to Google um, Hillary Clinton L.I. 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 and then just stopped. 
And oh, what and came up? Predictive text. What yeah. what came up was Hillary Clinton Library. Oh. So, um, and I didn't even know there was such a thing. So, if if I were to go to the other minor search engines and do that, what came up was, of course, what I was looking for: Hillary Hillary Clinton lies. So, if um, you know, if if you change a search algorithm a little bit, oh, and absolutely. you own ninety three percent of the search out there. Well, then, and you can affect what people, even if they're actually out looking for information, you can shield that information from them, then it is a threat. Do you know how easy it is to manipulate that um, information? It was so easy to manipulate this information. As of three weeks ago, if you would have looked up Republican platform, it would have given you Nazism. And that was something that somebody hacked. Uh, by just basically inputting it into Wikipedia and nobody checked it. But if you would have looked Republican platform, it would have said uh, Nazism. As one of the, one is of, one one of, of their the, platforms, yeah, 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 yeah. or yeah, they're I mean, associated with Nazis. Yeah, and, and the term alt right was actually invented by leftists. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's a whole lot yeah, of things. Yeah, absolutely. Going on. So mm -hmm. it's but the, like. But a the, point, you know, the point is, uh, all of this is to be expected that you mm -hmm. would have people mm -hmm. who are trying to. Uh, nefariously or honestly trying to change public opinion. I think mm -hmm. we need to the change the way is, the internet works. The question is whether or not it's anything that we actually need to worry about. Short answer, no. No. And, and, no. and I would say that, that the people get information now, uh, those who are easily swayed watch late night TV, yes. which is blatantly pro-socialism, uh, oh, yes. yes. i.e. Democratic Party. Because it's a and simple, it's a yeah, simple yeah, ideology. Yeah, it doesn't, yeah, you yeah. don't have to be smart to get it. Yeah, and then, you know, you know you're watching a show, if most of the commercials are about hemorrhoids, then you might not want to get your political information from it. And years ago, what did people do? They read newspapers. And what did newspapers do? Sway elections. And then after that, they watch TV. And what did TV do? Sway elections. And, and what's happening now? We're looking at Facebook Internet or whatever. Search. What does it do? Sway elections. It's happened. It's always happened. It's always going to happen. What do you have to do? Force yourself to be a, a do, good do, consumer. Do 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 searches on DuckDuckGo as well Duck, as Duck, Google. Go. Do search, you know, do, you know, look at, look at. Uh, alternative media sites alternative like media Russian. That, yeah, make sure that, you know. Uh, Al, Al Jazeera. Yeah. 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 That's how I. High five yeah. like oh, every watch a, Look at a wide variety of yeah. information sources. And, that's how uh, I knew Benghazi yeah. was BS uh, on the first day. Is yeah. I went to Al Jazeera and they're all like, nah, it's not the way they said it was. Nah, 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 it didn't go down. DOD, we have time? Do we have time? Yeah, okay. DOD says that the U.S. cannot win a cybersecurity war. Are they correct? Yes, well, they yeah, cannot. Of course, what, the, what they are going to win is the Department of Defense is going to win the uh, gouging the American taxpayers for more money. Going to win a lot more budget dollars more to budget be able dollars, to yeah. cybersecurity fight? Follow the money. They want Follow more the money. money. It's like the drug okay, war. Okay, we saw that one. We're out of it's like the drug war. Are you going to win it? Thank no. you very much for being part of the Libertarian Counterpoint. We'll see you again next week. Hey, high five right here. Same place. Boom. On right here, the too. web at www.accesssacramento, <laughs> on uh, Channel 17 in Sacramento, and of course on the internet at www.accesssacramento.org. Yeah, that's my drawing. YouTube.